Our scripture today is from Mark, the ninth chapter, verses uh, 29 through 30, 30 through 37. Leaving there, they went through Galilee. He didn't want anyone to know their whereabouts, for he wanted to teach his disciples. He told them, the Son of Man is about to be betrayed to some people who want nothing to do with God. They will murder him. Three days after his murder, he will rise, alive. They didn't know what he was talking about, but they were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum, where he was safe at home. He asked, when he was safe at home, he asked them, What were you discussing in the road? The silence was deafening. They had been arguing with one another over amongst them who was the greatest. He sat down and summoned the twelve. So you want first place, huh? then take the last place. Be the servant of all. And he put a child in the middle of the room. Then, cradling the little one in his arms, he said, Whoever embraces one of these children as I do embrace me, and far more than me, God who sent me. Here into the reading of the lesson. So in our scripture today, we find Jesus speaking with the disciples, and he tries to take them aside and get them away from everyone else because this is an important thing that he needs to talk to them about and tell them. And what comes out of this is not an understanding by the disciples. What comes out of this is confusion on their part and distraction. You see, Jesus is desperately trying to get this point across to them. Look, guys, something's going to happen. And it's going to happen soon. I'm going to be killed. And then I'm going to rise again. Now, we who know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey said, right? The, the rest of the story. Can look at what Jesus is saying and we can go, yeah, that's what happened. Because we know that. We have that advantage of knowing the rest of the story. But when he's talking to his disciples, they don't understand what he's telling them. What do you mean you're going to be killed? You are the Messiah. You're the one that's going to free the people of Israel. Surely God will not let you be killed. And what do you mean you're going to rise again after three days? I mean, I know that I've seen you raise people from the dead. But how are you going to do it yourself? Is one of us going to be the one that gets that power? Are we the ones that are supposed to raise you up after three days? And so we see in the scripture, and we're told directly, they didn't understand, and they were afraid to ask Jesus for more information. And as they begin walking down the road, they begin to argue with one another. So what do you think they're arguing about on the road? Was it that Jesus wasn't who he said he was? Well, I don't think that's the case, because if, it, if that was what one of them was saying, most likely they would have simply stopped following him right there. I mean, is there anything more human than to just walk away from something if we're disappointed in it? The arguments they're having about is who is going to be the greatest. So it probably went something like this. Okay, I get it. You're going to die. But what does that mean for us? Now, which one of us is going to be left in charge once you're gone? And when Jesus asks them what they're arguing about, none of them can bring themselves to respond. It's kind of like when a little kid whispers something under your breath and you say, uh, what was that? And their response is almost always nothing. <laughs> 
So Jesus asked them, and none of them could bring themselves to respond. It makes sense. Hey, you know how we've been praising you as the Messiah? And how we've seen you do such wonderful things? Well, we just want to know who gets to do that after you're gone. See, obviously, that's not something that they wanted to admit that they were saying to Jesus. But of course, Jesus already knows what they've been saying. And so, as he often does, he tries to find a way to make the point simple so that they can understand. He says, look, if you want to be the first in the kingdom of God, you need to put yourself last. Wait, did I say he made the point easy to understand? See, that idea is so contrary to everything that we are taught to believe in this world. How can you be first if you're last? How can you be the servant of all of everyone and possibly think that you are first in the kingdom of God? Well, Jesus tries to make it even more simple for them to understand. He takes a child. He says, look, here is a child. Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not just welcome me, but the one who sent me. Well, does that clear things up for you now? Maybe. Maybe not. But I think we need some historical perspective here to understand exactly what Jesus is trying to say with that child. Now for us today, most of us love children. Not all, but most. Oh, we might find them annoying at times, and we might be bothered by the noise that they make and the messes that they make. But by and large, as a society, we believe in protecting children. You know, we've moved to the point where children are protected by laws. No child labor, at least in our country. No child labor. We do what we can to keep people that prey upon children away from them. Give them free education and meals if there's no money for them to eat. And we even have whole television channels devoted to entertaining children, right? Now, don't get me wrong. All of those are good things. I'm glad that they are in place except for maybe the television channels. If I have to watch one more episode of Caillou, I think I'm going to scream. <laughs> but everything else is good. But we need to remember, at the time when Jesus is speaking, children did not take the same level of importance. Children were often used as the cheapest form of labor. They were often subject to dying early. At times, they were viewed as burdens by their family. So a child in the day of Jesus would, not have, would, would have been one of the lowest people on the social hierarchy, especially a child from a poor family. So what Jesus is really telling them is if you really want to welcome me, you will serve the lowest of the low as far as society is concerned. You will stop concerning yourself with whom you think is the best and begin to take a posture of servanthood to all that you meet especially those that are downtrodden. So how does that translate to us today? Well, how doesn't it translate to us today? Now, Carlin will tell you that I am a fan of dumb comedy movies. I would say that I am a fan of comedic classics. And one such movie is called Talladega Nights, and maybe you've seen it, maybe not, but it's a spoof on the world of NASCAR. And when the main character is young, his father tells him these words, and he lives his life by them, and the words are, if you ain't first, then you're last. Now, as he gets older, he takes those words to heart, he drives his car, and he's willing to wreck anyone, even himself, and so that he can win. You see, because if you ain't first, then you're last. Boy, don't we as a people today find ourselves falling to that trap as well. We put in countless hours at work to get that big promotion. Never mind if it causes a strain to our family or our personal relationships. We push our children into sports to the point where they break down emotionally. And some even come to hate that sport that they used to love. But it will be worth it once they make the pros. Oh, and never mind about getting them involved in the church community right now. They can do that when they're older on their own. We allow ourselves to compromise our beliefs so that we can get ahead in the world. That inappropriate joke that my boss told me, well, I sure didn't think it was funny, but 
I needed to laugh at it because I need him to like me. Now, don't misunderstand me here. It is a good thing to work hard at something. But the problem becomes when we allow those things to get in the way of how we're working for God. And it's not always a negative thing as well. We get ourselves so wrapped up in trying to do something good, we allow it to come between us and what we should be doing for serving God. Well, I could take some time to read my Bible or to help someone else out, but I really need to go to the gym today. And I just don't have time to do both. You see, we as a people are always pushing, always striving to be first. We do this and we don't allow ourselves the time that we need to follow Jesus and what he's called us to do. We focus our priorities in the wrong area. And then when things go wrong, we wonder what happened. And Jesus tells us, look, if you want to get ahead, stop worrying about getting ahead and start worrying about how you are serving me. The second thing in the scripture that I think is important as well, we are told the disciples don't understand and they are afraid to ask Jesus what he means. Isn't that what we do these days as well? I think we do it more like this. God, I don't understand. But then instead of listening for God's response or looking deeper at the problem, we tend to just give up and then moan about what happened. See, truly, things that happen, there are things that are going to happen in this life that we will simply never understand them. But there are plenty of things that happen in this life that if we pray and then we listen for God's response, we can get a much better understanding of what it is that God wants from us. Now, in my house, we have a saying that I repeat often to my children. One child in particular, and it is this. Ask a question, then listen for the answer. You see, this child likes to ask a lot of questions, and that is fine. They want to understand. They want to know. However, they like to ask a question and then immediately ask another question or repeat the same question over and over and over again. And if they would just take the time to listen, then I would give them the answer or I would find the answer for them. But I think we do that with God a lot as well. Lord, tell me why this has happened. But what about this? But what about this? Oh, hey, and can you do something about this for me, God? You see, we have to learn to ask the question and then be patient for the answer. In doing so, and also adopting that posture of servanthood and putting others before ourselves, then we can work towards becoming the first in the kingdom of God. My challenges for you this week are these. What is one thing that you can remove from your life so that you can focus on God more? And are you praying and then listening so you can hear God? Or are you praying just so that God can hear you? Amen.